Not even Dr. Seuss on Adderall and a deadline could cook up a bigger threat to national security than this bird. Owls are like real life cryptids. Avian aliens that overslept and missed their return flight home. If cameras weren't real and you'd never seen one, you would not believe this bird existed on the same planet. And that's all the intro we need because we can start right here with an owl giving you a backstage VIP pass to its eyes. Owls have ears and no. They're not here, but on the sides of its face with feathers covering it like a comb over covering a bald spot. Call it alopecia. I can't tell you how many licks to get to a Tootsie Pops G-spot, but it takes two fingers to get to a Hoot Ninja's control center. And speaking of seeing, that's another thing. Owls don't have eyeballs, more like eye tubes that can't move and are locked in their sockets. Which is how a bird already associated with death can be on straight exorcist timing. Able to turn their heads 270 degrees without divorcing their skulls to Antoinette way, thanks to special blood vessels in the neck. And the only reason they even have to do all that is because as creatures of the night, they have giant eyes to catch enough light to see. Think of the chronically perked out primate the Tarsier. But owls also have small skulls, so having eyes built like rods is the only way they can fit. Owl eyes are huge. For reference, if human eyes were proportionally the same, we'd be walking around with glimpse globes the size of grapefruits. I really can't stress how much of a cheat code those are. Some, like the Oriental Bay, can see with their eyes closed. Those eyes might be the biggest self-report that owls aren't from this earth. Quite possibly literally, you can tell a lot about a person from their eyes, and the same goes for owls, but with their color. I did say creature of the night, but not all of them are not colored. Owls with yellow eyes are more likely to be diurnal and active during the day. Orange means they're probably crepuscular, and if eyes are windows to the soul, black eyes tell you no one's been home for a minute. But also that they're nocturnal and darkness really is their domain. But then, you have this. If you ventured on the cryptid side of the internet, you definitely know about Mothman, a humanoid demon spawn with two eyes apparently redder than any red you've ever seen. Well, if you thought I was being cute about the cryptid stuff, this is the Stygian Owl of South America, named after the river of sticks that the souls of the dead would have to travel to get to the underworld of Hades, according to Greek mythos. Their eyes are naturally yellow, but the special tissue for night vision behind its retina causes it to reflect red under artificial light. And between that and the pseudo horns, you can kind of see how the mix-up might have happened. There's also the infamous Flatwoods Monster with free real estate in West Virginia folklore, which might have just been a barn owl from a really unfortunate angle, which is also understandable. But those that know about barn owls, and if you don't you will in this video, barn owls are a different kind of freaky. But the most cursed owl might be the one that's not alive anymore. Ornomegalonyx was a giant ancient Cuban predator of a bird believed to have stood at up to 3 feet 7 inches tall. It was such a unit that the first scientist to see its bones thought it was a type of terror bird before it was later classified as an owl. But Terror Bird doesn't have to be a name to be a lifestyle because they were believed to be ambush predators that would have airdropped you to the afterlife with bone crushing talons. It's also believed they would have murked prey as big as modern day black bears. As big as they are, they probably spent most of their time on the ground and only took flight when fight was off the table, basically acting like turkeys. Sounds like no big deal until you remember how on-timing turkeys can be. But like Fidel, the op of Cuba has long been past tensed, but today, there's over 250 flavors of hoop men populating the earth. Obviously way too many for me to describe them all, so I'ma just run through my favorites. This is the largest owl in the world, the Blakenstein's fish owl, and they earned the distinction off a mostly pescatarian diet, clearly cut from the same cloth as his decommissioned Cuban cousin. And then you have the owl just bigger than a Coke can with less gravity than a golf ball, the elf owl. But that doesn't stop this undersized muppet from being a menace of scorpions, among other things. This is a great horned, also called a tiger owl, but not because of their colorway, but because they're like nature said f it and gave an apex predator wings. I'm gonna get to them later, but just know, this aggro tweety is to other owls what orcas are to the cetacean race. They're is my personal favorite, the Snowy Owl, a battle-tested survivalist able to live in one of the most unlivable places on Earth. But they're also proof that white Air Force energy can be just as much of a headache. There's a saw wet and a spectacled owl, which are cute enough to make me rethink the entire narrative of this video. There's a Eurasian Eagle Owl, whose run puts that same narrative on life support, and who I'm only thinking of now because of the one named Flacco I saw at the Central Park Zoo before he escaped and became a regular Manhattan resident. That is, until he hit a building and was diagnosed with death. R.I.P. Flacco. And here we have the powerful owl, and yes, that's its Honest to Abe name. It's another one with a Jurassic pedicure, which means it can take down some of the biggest prey of any owl. It's an owl that copied a hawk's homework and changed some of the answers, and with a name like that, you can probably guess where it's based. In fact, I don't even think I really need to Australia. With owl seasoning every place on Earth that isn't Antarctica, owls obviously have different looks, but also different sounds. Whoever told you they only hoot lied more than an underage owl. And while hanging with owls is usually a hootin' nanny, if your neighbors would caterwauling barred owls, you'll wake up to the set of Planet of the Apes. They're not all bad, the western screech owl sounds like a fumbled ping pong ball. And you can't tell me the eastern screech doesn't give Kentucky Derby. But you won't find an outburst that's more to blame for mental anguish than the banshee-coated barn owl.
I keep trying to tell you, there's something about barn owls. Sound might arguably be the most unsettling thing about them, and I'm not talking about the sound they make. You definitely know that owls have better hearing than a mom after you close a door a decibel above what's acceptable. But you might not know just how far nature went to give them the advantage. Those two ears we talked about aren't symmetrical. The left ear is usually lower than the right, which means an owl on the prowl can pinpoint exactly where a noise came from based on what ear detects it first. If it hits the left first, then the owl can be sure it came from below. Owls also have faces built like satellite dishes, or I guess technically the dishes look like owls. Either way, it collects sound and funnels it towards the ears. The wildest variant of this build is the Great Grey Owl that honestly looks like it got its business punched in by nature. They have the biggest facial disc of any owl, meaning you can hide under two feet of snow and ice and still get got by a grey. They'll even blindly nosedive into the snow, just like the arctic fox, because same test, same solution. That's conversion evolution. Owls also figured out how to rearrange their feathers to change the shape of their disc, meaning they can basically shape shift. Depending on the situation, owls can make themselves look bigger when threatened, or the changeling will do the opposite, either for camouflage or for the what the f**k factor. You see what I mean when I say no other animal has contributed more to cryptid culture? Imagine being the first person to see this IRL. But I'm not done, there's one more supernatural ability owls have that might just be the most OP of all, and it's also because of their feathers. An experiment by BBC Earth took three birds and had them fly from one researcher to another, with several highly sensitive microphones to pick up even the slightest noise. First was the pigeon. <laughs> No real surprise to anyone who's lived near them. Next was the fastest bird alive, the peregrine falcon. Again, pretty standard stuff. But then came the barn owl, and this is why I called them hoot ninjas earlier. All right. Let's talk about it. Pigeons are social birds that also get put in a bucket by multiple birds of prey. So their takeoff sound is like an alarm call to the rest of the flock. So if one pigeon goes, you know the rest will follow. The crested pigeon even evolved their own form of a ringtone. Then there's a pigeon paralysis demon, the falcon. And since they put all their evolution points into speed, they don't have to worry about the sound they make, just one-shotting their prey into the next world. But with owls, they have modified flight feathers that makes it a living lethal weapon with a silencer. There is one important catch though. A sweetie sold its soul for a built-in muffler, and it cost a waterproof oil coating on their feathers. That's how the steely-eyed gatekeeper of the night turns into an alcoholic muppet when you add water. This might be the most damning evidence for the alien allegation. 70% of the earth is water. If this is what 70% of the world does to you, I have to assume you're not from it. And once owls get too wet, they can't fly. And clearly they didn't read the terms of service cuz they do not look happy about it. I'd say it's a fair trade though, cuz a flight happy dinosaur on silent mode with night vision and god tier hearing equipped might be one of the most conceptually terrifying things to be hunted by. They say getting gripped by an owl feels a lot like getting caught in the jaws of a German Shepherd. Getting disqualified from life by an owl usually means getting crushed to death. If the prey is too big, they'll just dismember it. And since owls like to eat their prey head first, that usually means decapitation. So if you ever see an animal that's physically lost its mind, you can be sure an owl somewhere ate good. Owls will also surplus kill. A picture was taken of a snowy owl pantry with about 70 dead lemmings arranged like a wreath. And there's even a story of scientists finding an owl nest with 70 plus cat collars, although I personally don't believe that one. But the avian assassin is for sure one of the most underrated predators in nature. Yeah, we're not about to skip past an owl snatching a hawk in its own crib. You see, there's birds of prey and the ones birds prey about, and owls are definitely the latter. Owls will regularly grief other birds of prey like this beheaded red-tailed hawk or this young cooper hawk. As you've seen, they'll use the cover of darkness to commit hit and flies on families like this peregrine falcons, and it's not always about a meal, sometimes it's about sending a message. Owls don't usually build their own nest, and this homicidal air mime has been seen attacking bald eagles in an attempt to hijack theirs. But owls also don't believe in squatters' rights, so God help the Kestrel that try to use their own strat against them. Owls are honestly what would happen if you gave honey badgers Red Bull. They're definitely one of those f around and find out animals, but there is one bird owls have generational beef with. Owls and crows have one of the most infamous rivalries in nature, and it's cause owls will kill without prejudice, and often that includes crows. But crows are also highly intelligent, and arguably the smartest birds on earth, but more importantly, they have the capacity to hold grudges and seek revenge. So crows will mob any owls caught in broad daylight when they have the advantage, harassing the bird of prey using the OP power of friendship. It's how the same predator that can check falcons, hawks, and even eagles can get railroaded by a murder of crows. The beef is so ingrained that crows that have never even seen an owl will instinctively choose violence, and owls will take out any single lone crows they can. And I know I've been saying crows, but ravens aren't exactly fans either, especially when an owl can change its Facebook status to nevermore. There's another bird of prey this flying derecho has major problems with. Each other. 
Owls regularly hunt and kill other owls, and the two main suspects, the great horned owl from before and the barred owl. Barred owls are pretty competent predators on their own, and often they get victimized by the flying tiger. Is technically not cannibalism the same way a leopard eating a cheetah or a red fox flatlining its arctic cousin isn't, it still feels wrong as hell. The barred owl can be a different kind of problem, which is why the US government has been trying to pass a bill to murk 400,000 of them. And if that sounds OD, it's cause the flying invasive garbage disposal eats literally everything, to the point where they've been outcompeting the native spotted owl into near oblivion. The crazy thing is, life retiring 400,000 would barely put a dent in their population. Owls will also run fades with deer, and they're not afraid to press other land predators in their territory like coyotes. Snowy owls are a special kind of trigger happy since they have to compensate for having their nests on the ground. The result is the biggest crash out of the owls choosing fight like and flight with a whole wolf. There have even been reports of them dive bombing polar bears that wander too close. But for all their talents, there aren't really any documented cases of an owl putting a person in the coffin. That is, unless you believe the staircase owl theory. In 2003, Michael Peterson was convicted of murdering his wife Kathleen in their home in North Carolina, and according to the autopsy report, the cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head. But there's been legitimate theories that it was actually a barred owl that attacked her and caused her to fall down the stairs. The theory gained more traction when it was revealed that feathers were later found in her hair, and that the lacerations on her head were pretty consistent with getting mauled by an owl. Now full disclosure, I'm not really that informed on the case, but even I thought that was a stretch. But crazier things have happened. Let me remind you that the entire world thought Lindy Chamberlain was guilty, whole time a dingo really did eat her baby. We might never know for sure, but there's a reality where a man served hard time for a crime an owl committed. Now you might come away from this video thinking I feel some type of negative about owls. Quite the opposite. I've gained a whole new respect for these birds. For one, they're free pest control. Just one barn owl family can eat a thousand rodents in a season. Speaking of the barn owl, they're monogamous, and not only will they often mate for life, they'll often return to the same nest year after year. You can't have that kind of longevity without reinforcing your bond, and the owl equivalent of a vow renewal is what you're seeing right here, called billing. That and a good intimate preening session. And while they're still wild animals that really aren't meant to be pets, the ones rescued by humans can often end up imprinting on them. The result? makes depression here boss music. And even though they're often associated with dark and death, in Japan they're often seen as a sign of good fortune. Moral of the story, owls aren't harbingers of doom, they're not the feathery antichrist. Nah, owls are just the cats of birds, and I honestly love that for them. But that's gonna do it for this video. I'm not kidding when I say I hyperfixated on owls for a couple of weeks so much that I'm actually planning a trip to a raptor trust near me. If this video gets 130,000 likes, I'll share some pictures and videos with y'all. And don't worry, I didn't forget about the promise I made here because y'all really demolished last video's like goal. Like for real, I did not think y'all would do it that fast. And because I'm a man of my word, I will be visiting an elephant sanctuary sometime this summer and recording it for y'all. I do want to make sure I'm supporting a legitimate place, so if anyone has any experience with them and can recommend any ethical ones, feel free to comment down below. We'll get to that bridge, but until we do, make sure you drink water. If you have a spouse, go tell them you love them right now. If owls can do it, so can you. Support your local sky cats, and I'ma see y'all in the next one.